The Spirit is your connection with God, but the Bible says... Coming up on this episode of Encounter TV, I am ministering a message on your identity in Christ. And then, on our Mark 16 Miracle segment, a woman is waiting at a train station when something miraculous happens to her. Also later, I want to pray with you for your spiritual breakthrough so that you can walk confidently in your divine identity. Encounter TV begins right now. You're watching Encounter TV, featuring the evangelistic healing ministry of David Diga Hernandez. David is taking the saving and healing power of God to this generation and the nations of the world. A generation is being inspired. You'll encounter the Holy Spirit's presence, God's healing power, the truth of the Word, the love of Christ, and freedom through the miraculous. You're watching Encounter TV. For every moment that passes, whether you realize it or not, you are participating in a conversation with the Holy Spirit in the realm of the Spirit. This is referred to as inner fellowship. You know, the Holy Spirit longs for a friendship with you. He desires for you to get to know Him better, and He desires that you surrender more of your life than you ever imagined possible. The Holy Spirit works in us, and not only does He empower us to heal the sick, not only does He give us the authority to cast out devils, not only does He embolden us to preach the gospel, but the Holy Spirit Himself does something very powerful and profound. The Holy Spirit, very persuasive and very persistent, convinces us of our identity in Christ. The Holy Spirit causes us to see, to think, and to exist in a new reality that I call, and many believers call, and the Scripture calls, life in the Spirit. Hello, I'm David Diga Hernandez, and you are watching Encounter TV. Today on Encounter TV, I'm going to be ministering a message on spiritual identity. Many believers live defeated, live discouraged, live a powerless spirituality. But the Holy Spirit is about to change that for you because when faith comes, it comes by the hearing of God's Word. And you're going to hear the Word of God today, a message on spiritual identity. And I believe that as you listen to this message, as you learn to identify in the Spirit, you'll see transformations such as you've never known possible. Let's go now to Lawndale, California, where I'm ministering this message on spiritual identity. 1 Thessalonians 5.23 Now may the God of peace make you holy in every way, and may your whole spirit and soul and body be kept blameless until our Lord Jesus Christ comes again. Now we look to our Heavenly Father and we all acknowledge that God, as we understand Him, as the Scripture reveals Him, is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. There are three in unity, tri-unity, trinity. These three are one, though they are three different persons. And though we are not three different persons per se, man is still expressed in three ways, body, soul, and spirit. Say this with me. I am a spirit who has a soul that lives in a body. Now, are you your body? Are you your soul? Say, I am a spirit who has a soul and lives in a body. Are you your body? No. Are you your soul? You're your spirit. I say one more time. I am a spirit who has a soul that lives in a body. Now, I'm going to illustrate this. So what I want to talk about here is that man is trifold. Now, say it with me one more time because I want this to really stick with you. I am a spirit who has a soul that lives in a body. Now, your body is often referred to in the Scripture as your flesh. And when reading of the Scripture that has the word flesh in it, you have to be careful because sometimes Paul the Apostle is talking about your physical body and other times Paul the Apostle is talking about the sin nature. Now, they are, in one sense, one and the same. I like to call your body your earth suit. It's how you participate with the world around you. 
It's how you communicate with other people. It's how you relate to your reality. It's what you experience on the day-to-day basis. It's eating, sleeping, going to work. It's relationships, it's finances, it's emotions. Everything in your life that you experience is most often experienced in the natural. Your body is your earth suit. And then there's your soul. Your soul is your mind, your will, your emotions, your personality. Your soul is the place of decision. This is what makes you a unique person. This is where you make choices. This is where you decide what to think, ultimately affecting what you feel. Your soul is the center place. It is where you can decide to live in the realm of the flesh or in the realm of the spirit. Now, over to his right is the Spirit. Now, the Scripture says this in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10 through 12, but it was to us that God revealed these things by his Spirit, for his Spirit searches out everything and shows us God's deep secrets. Verse 11, no one can know a person's thoughts except that person's own spirit, and no one can know God's thoughts except God's own spirit, and we have received God's spirit, not the world's spirit, so we can know the wonderful things God has freely given us. That's 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 10 through 12. Now, your spirit, as the scripture says, is your communication with God. The Bible says nobody knows God like God's spirit. In the same sense, nobody knows you like you know yourself. And in an even deeper sense, nobody knows you like your spirit knows you. So the depths of you fellowship or commune or have friendship or communicate with the depths of God through the Holy Spirit. The depths of God connect with the depths of your being in the realm of the spirit. This is why when Paul the Apostle says to pray without ceasing, it's possible because though your mouth is not praying, your spirit is always fellowshipping. Though you are not always aware in your mind of what God is doing, somewhere in the heavenly realm, a celestial conversation is taking place 24-7, whether you're aware of it or not. This is why Jesus said you have to be born again. Think about it. The Spirit is your connection with God. But the Bible says that those who are in sin are dead in spirit. You were born in your body who has a soul, but before you meet Christ, your spirit is dead, which is why you can't communicate with God. Dead men don't seek anything. God sought you out, and God brought you life. And it was your spirit that was brought to life. So Jesus said you must be born again of the... Spirit. This is why he says, hey, don't be afraid of the one who can just destroy the body. He says, be afraid of the one who can destroy both the body and the soul in hell. You notice he doesn't mention the spirit there. That's because the spirit does not go to hell. Those who are alive in the spirit, their home is heaven. Now, we can go a little deeper. So you have your body, your soul, your spirit. I am a spirit who has a soul that lives in a body. I am not my body. I am not my soul. I've been brought to life. My identity, who I am, is rooted in the spirit. So in the spirit, we find all that we need. We find joy. We find peace. We find fellowship and connection with God. We find clarity of mind. We find freedom. We find truth, we find Christ, we find revelation. All of those spiritual things we find in the Spirit. Here's the problem. Though all of these things are available to you here, most Christians live their life like this. And though everything you need is made available to you, though your spirit is alive, though you are communicating with God, on a 24-7 basis, though you have all the strength that you need to make it through whatever you're facing, it does you no good if you don't use it. If you don't have faith, it might as well have been that God never promised a thing. 
Because faith is how we receive all that God has given to us. Now, here's the problem. Finances go awry. And because we're focused on living so much in this realm, it affects the soul. The soul gets depressed. The soul gets worried. The soul gets stressed. The soul gets entangled in the cares of the world. Relationships go bad. Health goes bad. Ministry doesn't go the way you want it to go. Your business doesn't go the way you want it to go. Your life isn't exactly what you wanted it to be. And here's the problem is many people are putting their joy on hold, waiting for the perfect circumstance to come about. And they say, I, I'm not going to really enjoy this now. I'm going to continue working toward what I see as the ideal situation. Now, this world begins to weigh on the soul. And the more we listen to the world, the quieter the spirit's voice becomes because we can't hear him. And believer, you're asking God to change your circumstance when you just need to change your perspective. You're saying, Lord, I'm asking you to come and fix everything. You ever wonder why trials are so burdensome? I mean, I talk to some Christians they are so depressed. It's depressing. How are you doing, brother? Oh, you know, I'm just making it. I'm thinking, my goodness, you're saved. You're filled with the Holy Spirit. You have the joy of God within you. Now, here's the thing. You're waiting for God to change everything out here. And we're praying for the day of big breakthrough. You don't need a big breakthrough. All you need is a small shift. You don't need an external transformation. You need an internal change of perspective. And when you live in this way, it doesn't matter what happens out here because you're receiving everything that God has for you right here. This is why Paul the Apostle writes, I'm pressed, but I'm not crushed. I can be persecuted, but right here, I'm never abandoned. And you can strike me down, but I can never be destroyed. I am a spirit who has a soul that lives in a body. What he has come Still to, to come on Encounter in the TV. Reality of Christ. This is the Holy Spirit's greatest work in you. He is persuasive and he is persistent and he is trying to convince you of your new reality. I am a spirit who has a soul that lives in a body. I pray that message is blessing you. I'm going to be finishing that up in just a moment. But first, it's time for our Mark 16 miracle segment. This is where we feature footage from you prophesying, praying for the sick, casting out devils, evangelizing. You know, we talk about identity, and this part of the program is more interactive. This is where we challenge you, the viewer, to expand the kingdom of God outside the four walls of the church. And when you know your identity in Christ, you're endued with power from on high. When you know your identity in Christ, you cast out devils, you pray for the sick, you evangelize, and you prophesy empowered by the Holy Spirit. This clip came in to us, and this features a woman who is waiting at a train station when something miraculous happens to her. Watch this. You get a honey, you said? Yeah, how much pain right now? I can see everything. Okay, so I'm going to just feel like relaxed and just be aware that there might be a That praise people, they start laughing. <laughs> it's alright. <laughs> we want to give you a hug. You know, God loves you. You can help you a lot of pain.
Kayla, I just got a word for you that I saw you, I saw beauty on you, I saw you doing cosmetology and doing things like that. And what'd you say to me? <laughs> God's good. I do hair. <laughs> and I went to school for it. Oh, that's so good. Praise God. <laughs> my God. <laughs> and God can do the same with you. Here's my challenge to you now. Get outside the four walls of the church, prophesy, pray for the sick, evangelize, capture it on footage, send it into us, and we may feature it here on the next Mark 16 Miracle segment. Now, we're gonna go back to Lawndale, California, and I'm gonna be finishing up that message on spiritual identity and knowing your spiritual identity. But remember, at the end of the program, I wanna pray with you, and we're gonna be praying for deliverance, we're gonna be praying for breakthrough, so that you can walk confidently in your spiritual identity. Stick around until the end of the program so that I can pray with you. Let's go now back to Lawndale, California to conclude this message. You ever notice that when people leave the church, the church becomes evil? I mean, they walk through those doors and oh my goodness, it's a beautiful building. It's a beautiful people. It's a beautiful pastor. It's a beautiful, great sounding worship team. But the moment they leave, I always knew there was something wrong at that church. And what happens, they leave and they grow bitter. And I've always found it odd that when people find themselves in a negative circumstance like that, or for example, maybe a relationship, maybe you had a good friend, and for years, that friend was good. Then they do one thing wrong, and you go, oh, well, I knew it. I'm thinking after all those years, they, 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 then all of a sudden one thing comes out and you're, 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 they're, you're, you cut them off. Or maybe somebody talks about you. You say, oh, I knew it. And what's interesting to me is the terminology that we use to describe when we are wronged with someone. We'll say, I always knew they were fake. Why is it that we equate the positive with fake and the negative with real? Why is it that when somebody to us is essentially good, a good friend, a good pastor, a good church leader, a good anything, good business partner, why is it that the moment they do something wrong, suddenly everything about them was fake? It's because it is human nature to identify the fake as the real. I'll give you another example. I grew up in a great home. My grandparents were saved, Christians. My great-grandparents were Christians. My grandparents were Christians. My parents were Christians. I'm a Christian. My grandfather was a pastor. My dad was a pastor. I'm an evangelist. Third generation ministry, fourth generation Christianity. And people will say things like, well, you know, I get why you believe what you believe, but you wouldn't believe that if you grew up in the real world. I said, the real world? Mine was just as real. And it is a victim poverty mindset, a defeated mindset that identifies with the negative as its reality. We do the same thing to ourselves. Because the moment you mess up, you don't want to show up to church. Why? Because you feel like a fake. You say things like, well, I can't really handle this Christian life. I don't belong in the church. I don't belong with the church people. I don't belong doing these things. I don't belong in ministry. And we start to identify with it. But this is what the scripture says in Romans chapter 7, verse 17. Listen to what he says. So I am not the one doing wrong. It is sin living in me that does it. Now, Paul, the apostle there, is not denying responsibility. God holds us accountable for our actions. Rather, Paul the Apostle is choosing to not identify with that which is wrong in his life. He chooses rather to identify with what God says about him, what the truth is, and what he has come to experience in the new reality of Christ. This is the Holy Spirit's greatest work in you. He is persuasive, and he is persistent, and he is trying to convince you of your new reality. So when you sin, yes, you are a fake. You're a fake sinner. You are not a wolf in sheep's not a wolf in sheep's. You are a sheep in wolf's clothing. No matter what you do, because of what Christ has done, your identity is rest assured in the spirit based upon what he did when he said it is finished. Now the scripture says this. Romans chapter 8 verse 15. 
For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. That's the Holy Spirit's greatest work. Is getting you to believe and think and live in the new reality. His greatest work is getting you to identify with that which is spiritual about you rather than that which is carnal about you. And that is most the battle. What a wonderful privilege to know that you are that you are at, you belong to him. He loves you. The scripture says that he will never leave you nor will he forsake you. And the Holy Spirit today wants to give you breakthrough. He wants to communicate to you. He wants to communicate to you that you belong to the Father. And he wants you to be convinced of this. I believe that today, as you've heard the word of God, and as you allow faith to come alive in your heart, that the Holy Spirit himself is going to begin to do a work in you. And that what was once depression will turn to joy. What was once confusion will become clarity. What was once chaos will become peace. As you solidify your belief, your faith, your confidence in not only who you are in Christ, but in who he is in you, that something's going to transpire. Something's going to change. I, I really believe this is for somebody watching. You're not watching this by accident. God is doing something in your heart even right now. And we're going to pray in a moment. And when we do, let's believe God that you're going to experience breakthrough. Let's believe that this barrier that you've seen in your spiritual walk, this hurdle that you've been trying to climb, is going to be taken down. You're going to see breakthrough again. It's time to take back your prayer life. It's time to take back your devotion to God's word. It's time to take back your commitment to his kingdom. And the reason we lose sight of these things is because we lose sight of who he is in us. You know, the gospel, it's not about us. And it's not even necessarily all about our identity, though that's an important aspect. What's most important is who he is. And as you begin to focus on he who is faithful and he who began a good work in you and he who died for you, and he who loved us first, when your confidence is in him, it changes everything about your person. And you begin to see in the spirit instead of in the flesh. You begin to think how God wants you to think. You begin to hear things how God wants you to hear things. You begin to speak what God wants you to speak. It goes from speaking negatively to speaking positively, from speaking death to speaking life. Everything about you is about to change as you learn to take that inner perspective shift. It's not a big breakthrough that you need. It's just a small change in perspective. Now let's pray and let's believe that God is gonna give you this breakthrough. I wanna pray for two things. I always like to pray for healing because this is a healing ministry and I love to evangelize, I love to minister God's power, but we're gonna pray here today. We're gonna to pray, number one, for breakthrough in your spiritual life. We're gonna pray that you would begin to grow confident, that the enemy would not be able to assault your confidence in Christ, that he would not be able to distract you from looking to what he's done for you, that you would stop looking at your inadequacies and instead look at his grace, which enables you to transform those things that need to be transformed. We're gonna pray that and then we're gonna pray for your healing. So let's believe God right now. Come on, stretch your hands forward. Let's believe that the anointing, I feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit. He's doing something, I'm telling you, you may look silly doing this, but I want you right now, I want you to stretch out your hand. Come on, stretch out your hand toward, toward me. There's something happening here. I can feel the power of God moving and he's touching you. Wow, Lord, I thank you for that one watching who Father is believing for breakthrough. First of all, Father, I come against every lying devil in Jesus' name. I break the power of the enemy over that one watching. And Lord, I pray in Jesus' name that the truth of your word would begin to take victory in their mind and in their heart. Father, as I sit here now and lift that one watching to you, I come against condemnation. 
I felt that someone just got freedom right now. Someone was just set free from condemnation and guilt. I thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. I come against condemnation and guilt in Jesus' name. Father, I come against the sense of inadequacy in Jesus' name. Lord, I rebuke every assault and I come against every lie. I pray for breakthrough right now, Father. I pray your presence and your power begins to envelop them. Lord, let dominion be established in the place of that one watching. Let your presence change and electrify the atmosphere. Change everything about them and around them and in them. In Jesus' name, and Lord, I pray right now for that one who's believing for a healing. Someone just set free from depression right now. You have severe depression and anxiety, and God is setting you free right now. In Jesus' name, Lord, I thank you for what you're doing. Uh, somebody watching right now, I saw, uh, wow, I saw there was like a, a bone cracked. That's a hip bone and, and some type of injury that, 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 that's a part of obviously, but I see that you fell in an odd way. And that's all that, that I'm hearing from the Lord is that, that they said you felt the way you fell was very odd. Um, Lord, I come against, first of all, the spiritual demonic assault that is against that one, because you kind of did suspect that that was demonic, and it was. And in Jesus' name, we come against the stronghold. Wow, I'm getting a lot for you. That person who has that broken bone and the hip that fell in an odd way that you suspected it was demonic, he's also been coming against your family with drug addiction and with witchcraft. And I bind that in Jesus' name right now. I break, I feel it's like electricity flowing. He's breaking that power right now over you in Jesus' name. There's somebody watching me right now. Um, there's a skin condition right on, the, it's on the right side of your face and it's painful. In Jesus' name, I rebuke that right now. There was a problem with someone's, on the right hand, someone with, with, your, with the finger, the pointing finger. Um, there's, it's not a bone, it's something with the tendon or with the muscle. Lord, I break that in Jesus' name, the, the power of sickness, and I command that you be made whole in the precious, wonderful name of Jesus. Now, I do not have to call out what God is doing in you. I don't have to call out your healing. He's doing it in you regardless of whether or not I speak it. All you have to do is stand in faith because the anointing on this broadcast, it flows, it's moving, and it's setting people free from demonic strongholds, from sickness, from all of those things because His power does it all. Jesus came to destroy the works of the devil and when His power and His anointing flow like it is right now, it breaks every yoke of bondage. And I want you to say it if you agree. Say in Jesus' name, amen. Well, I want to thank you for watching. I pray today that you were encouraged now and strengthened in your identity in Christ. That is it for this edition of Encounter TV. Until next time, remember, nothing is impossible with God. Thank you for watching Encounter TV. To connect with me and this ministry, visit EncounterTV.com. There, you can watch full episodes of Encounter TV on demand, submit videos of you ministering on the streets for our Mark 16 Miracle segment, and see upcoming ministry events in your area. Also, don't forget to download our ministry app by searching my name, David Diga Hernandez, in the Apple or Google Store. Thank you again for watching Encounter TV. There's this idea that our dreams are more important than God's will. We're a sinner, homosexual sin, heterosexual sin, why we were all yet sinners, Christ died for us. By your will.